thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. You know, it's funny. I've re-recorded this intro probably four or five different times. And uh, the reason why is because when I got back from Florida, I knew that the clip that I have here is a very special clip. For any of you who have played Pollen at Omaha for an extended period of time, you know, every once in a while, Parliament Omaha game just goes off the rails. And when it does, it happens maybe once out of six months of grinding, maybe once out of four months of grinding. When it happens, there's no time limit on going home. You have to stay until the game is over with or until you're broke or until you have all the money. And I know that sounds crazy, but when you're playing a one 2 game, and the normal level of raising gets to be about two, three hundred dollars. I mean, we're talking 40, 60 big blinds for all those who are used to playing no limit hold'em. Uh, and you still have stacks and stacks behind, things just get crazy. So in the first half of this episode, you're gonna see some pretty standard stuff. That doesn't mean skip to the end. But in the second half of the episode, I'm gonna take a little break with Ernesto. We're gonna go outside, and then we're gonna come back inside. When I come back inside, things go off the rail. I was literally done recording for the night. I was ready just to relax and have a good time. I had a good friend of mine named Ira take me out to the Plum Lounge. Uh, so I got 12-year-old McClellan Scotch, several of those in me. I've got whatever else I was drinking in me. I've got all sorts of stuff. And I am just ready to have a good time. And then craziness happens where I wasn't planning on recording, but sometimes the card gods just tell you you need to start recording, and that's what I did. So tune in, sit back, relax, play smart, and enjoy the video. So the first hand that we look down at here, we have Ace-9-10 Jack with the 9-10 of hearts and the Ace of clubs in our hand. We elect to go ahead and raise to $55 pre-flop, and we're going to end up getting six callers. So we're going to go to the flop, for $330 in the pot, six ways. Now, when the flop comes jack nine six with two clubs, I do have the nut club blocker. I also have top two pair, and it is a little bit of a wet board. So action is going to check around to me. I'm going to double check my hands. Yes, in fact, I do have the ace of clubs, so no one should be continuing here with a flush draw. So I go ahead and lead out for $200. Instantly, I get two players who fold. I get a player who ends up calling. Other players end up getting out of the way. So we're going to go heads up to the turn. Now the turn comes as seven of spades. Now my opponent, when he sees the seven of spades, he decides he's just going to rip it all in for about $400. So if you're new to the game of Pot Limit Omaha, you're going to sit there and say, Professor, Professor, 810 makes the nuts. Of course he's got to have the nuts, right? No, that's not necessarily all the time. Maybe the seven just gave him a little bit of extra equity. Maybe he has jacks and sevens now with a 10 queen, or maybe he has nines and sevens now with a 10 queen. He doesn't necessarily have to have eight, 10. So there's plenty of hands where the seven is giving him additional equity where he could be betting. But keep in mind, he's only betting $400 into an 1130 pot. So when you figure the stack to pot size ratio where he's betting a third of the pot, I'm pretty much obligated to call here because in the event he does have eight, 10, that's going to suck. But in the event that the seven just gave him extra equity, I'm actually ahead. When the river bricks out a deuce, I announce I have two pair. He says he has two pair as well. I turn over the nut two pair, and we're going to end up scooping this one. See, kids, you don't always have to have the nuts in Parliament Omaha. Sometimes just top two pair will take down a nice $1,500 pot. So in this great game of Parliament Omaha, occasionally you got to put your opponent on a range of hands or some specific hands or draws. We look down at a hand like deuce, deuce, nine, nine with the nine deuce of hearts. Not exactly a great hand, but we're going to call a $15 pre-flop raise. We're going to go six ways to a flop, and the flop's going to come jack, king, deuce. Now, when it checks over to me, I'm going to bet $40. There's a few reasons why I'm betting $40. One, since it has checked over to me and I'm in position, I can't assume anybody has a set of kings or a set of jacks. So what else could they have on such a dry board? Probably some kind of straight draw. So when the turn is essentially a brick and puts out the four of spades, I like to bet pot. In this situation, I'm trying to charge my opponent maximum and deny them the most amount of equity. Sometimes in Pot Limit Omaha, you want to increase the amount of equity you have in a pot. You want callers, and sometimes you want to deny the equity from your opponent. So a full pot here is going to end up doing it. Our opponents are going to fold. Besides putting your opponent on a range of hands, you also have to go with your reads in some instances. <clears throat> now we look down at a hand like four, five, seven, nine, double suit. 
I am under the gun, and I am the one who initially raised it to $15. I do like to juice up the game a little bit, but also, if I notice a table is a little tight, I will play a little bit looser, and I'm going to go with my reads and push people around a little bit. So when we make it $15 pre-flop, we end up going five ways to the flop. And the flop's going to come out, not exactly anything you think I would write home to mom about, five king, ten, complete rainbow. So we have bottom pair, a prayer, and a hope. Basically, backdoor diamonds and backdoor clubs, and they're not even that good. But I'm going to bet $30. Now, you might say to yourself, Professor, Professor, you're nuts. You're an absolute maniac. What are you doing? You're just pissing away money. I hope everybody listens to you. First of all, you have to understand the di table dynamics. The table dynamics here is everybody is overfolding their hands. So I know even though I have bottom pair, I can represent a lot of big hands. And anybody who's going to call me on a board like this is probably going to have some straight draws like, Jack, queen, nine, queen, maybe king, queen, nine, king, jack, nine, something to that effect. Because after all, what's really worth calling here that's not worth raising? So when my opponent calls, we're going to go heads up to the turn. The turn's going to put out a 10. And in this situation, I'm like, you know what? I can represent a 10 here. I can represent king 10. Now, my opponent does have about $150 behind this bet. I actually bet $60 here. The reason why I do that is because I am setting it up to where if he does call, I have an opportunity to bluff for it on the river. If I bet pot here instead, then he's going to be pot committed pretty much no matter what, and I won't have any opportunity to bluff him. So I'm already planning on setting the bluff in the event that I do get called. And what do you know? My opponent elects to call. So now I know he's got about $160 behind him, and chances are he's either got a king that he really doesn't want to call with, or he's got like queen jack. When the river bricks out, essentially a brick, a queen, uh, if he's got king jack or queen jack, he's not going to call with a pair of queens. If he does have king queen, he might find a call. And of course, if he's got ace jack, he's going to call. And of course, if he's had pocket kings this whole time, he's going to call. But right now, he knows he's probably losing to any 10. So I figured this is a pretty safe card. And my opponent, after going in the tank a while, ends up folding. For the vlog, we're here with Ira in the Plum Lounge. I've learned everything I know from the PLO professor. I'm going to tell you that up front. So, pretty excited to be here. It's my first time in the Plunge Lounge, second time at Hollywood. We're having a great time. Good times. We're going to uh, enjoy, uh, take a little break from poker, and then we'll go back to grinding. I like it. All right. Play smart, everybody. All Run right. like a god. Now, coming back from break with Ira, I am probably three or four McClellans in. I'm having a great time right now. Uh, I'm ready to start buying the table drinks, the whole nine yards. Now, that also does mean when I get a little tipsy, I might get a little sassy as well. There's a little foreshadowing for you. Just so you know, before I was a vlogger, one of my specialties was putting people on tilt, not because of the sound of my voice, but because of stuff I used to say back to them, banter back and forth, and I'd use that to my advantage. Now that I'm a vlogger and I'm a public figure, it's a little bit harder to do that. Well, note to self, when I'm having a good time, sometimes I let it slide a little bit. So the flop comes out 8-8-10. Eight, eight, I have ace-king 4-8 with three spades in my hand. So we flop three eights with an ace and a king on board. Now there are two diamonds out there. I go ahead and I ended up betting $60. A lot of people fold and then something happens. One of my least favorite things in Potlamid Omaha, besides angle shooting, I get check raised. Now I'm thinking, you know what? I'm a little tipsy. I'm going to stick it to you. So I go ahead and call the check raise. Get it in there as fast as I can because I'm not going anywhere. The only hand I'm losing to is pocket tens. If this guy has 810 uh, or 8 anything, uh, right now I'm ahead. Uh, 810, I'm behind. And if I am behind, he's giving me the right odds to draw out on him. So this is, again, another reason why you don't check raise in Palo at Omaha. And it's not that I'm getting the right odds in the event that I hit. I'm getting the right odds if I hit and you're going to pay me off. So the guy does have about $490 behind. So really, I'm only calling $170 to win the $590 that's in there plus another $490. Now, when the turn comes up in Ace Diamonds, he decides to pot it, goes all in for $490. I snap call. And let's go ahead and take a listen. Yep. <laughs> it's a good check raise. A <laughs> I mean, bet out, it doesn't happen that way, but whatever. <laughs> Uh-oh, the professor's getting a little snippy here. So 
Yeah, I'm a little tipsy. I'm having a great time, though. And let me tell you, the people at Hard Rock Hollywood are absolutely amazing. And uh, I think the the table just wasn't used to seeing a vlogger having such a good time versus taking it so seriously. So we look down at 4-6, King-10 with the 6-4 of clubs. And we're going to go four ways to the flop for $30. Now, the flop comes 10 of spades, 7 of spades, 5 of hearts. So I flop top pair with an open-ended straight draw. So I like to bet $60, about half pot here. Now, I do end up getting one caller and another person's going in the tank here for 60 bucks. I'm thinking I don't mind getting one or two callers. Uh, I don't want all four of us going to the turn. And oh my God, now I'm getting three callers and now we're getting four callers. Okay, so this is plan A is not exactly working out. There was $120 in the pot. I figured 60 bucks would get rid of one or two people. And instead everybody came in. So now when the turn comes, the jack of hearts, there's two hearts and two spades out here on the board. I'm pretty much done with the hand. I'm like, no, 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 eight, nine just got there. I check, river comes a five of diamonds. And uh, the first player is going to check. Second player is going to check to me. And we're going to do the same thing we did last time. We're going to go in and listen to what me actually talking to the camera and let you know exactly what was going through my thoughts that exact moment. Yeah. Four ways. I don't know if I can get this through, and I don't know if I'm good. Ten. I'll show you guys the rest. Ten. All right, my man. It's Ernesto. Ernesto. Ernesto here, who happens to work in the box, has absolutely hooked the professor up. Let's go. I've been so stressed out on this trip. Um, but we're, we're playing some PLO right now. I'm stuck like 700 for the actually 1100, including the buy in. How much I'm stuck Ernesto's stuck a little bit. We're right next to each other, and now I'm gonna go from having a good grinding time to just yeah. having yeah. a great time. Yeah, let's run it up. Let's yeah, run it up. Wayne's still in the tournament too, so play smart, everybody. Run like a god. We we turned off the video for a minute for a reason. What's the amount? 630. Free flop? Wow. We're in for 90. So 630. Does that reopen it? Hold on, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what's the bet? 630? All right. So much behind. Now all the balls are okay. You're good. Go ahead, Sam. As long as I win this hand, you guys are all right. I was going to turn off the vlog, but I literally just got back from smoking. And this is what's called the gambling. <laughs> it's good content. <laughs> oh, and we're both, you guys are effective like 700 ish. <laughs> How much is in the make? <laughs> Could win. I'm going to win this. <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> And you guys players. will have to laugh with me because it's kind of funny when you think about it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Jesse's sitting over there with kings or queens. Oh. He has kings. Oh. Yes, kings. He, he put all in first? Yeah, I went on first. All in. Yeah. In the car. Bye-bye. Uh, oh, yes, I am so excited. <laughs> you guys just made my week win, lose, or draw. I just want all of you to know that. Hollywood is awesome, bro. Sorry. He reminds me oh. of uh, Rip Torn. Oh, I just... Is, this is such... I mean, you can't have a better time than this, right? You're you playing Pile Rip in Omaha. The pot is redonkulous and there's still action, you know? It's like, ooh. Oh, this one, I think I want to Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm like, okay with anything. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. This is such a big pot. I'm okay. I think I have a wrap. I think I have five, six, nine. I have five, six, nine. <laughs>
<laughs> it's gonna be amazing if it comes to deuce deuce. Oh. Oh my goodness, look at this pot. Oh, this should definitely get 100,000 views on YouTube. Between him and I, so we're doing this twice, boys. Oh man. Twice, you have to fade the world. Set, ace. No! I have a straight for one. Straight. Nut straight for the other. I have the nut straight. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. All right. So I'm not even in this hand, but this game has gone unhinged. 760 pre flop, four way, and there's still action to be had. I'm not even in this hand. I'll tell you guys what I had in this hand in a minute, uh, and you'll understand um, why I couldn't call, but. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is the kind of game that if you're stuck piles, you can get unstuck in. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna see the flop here. I might have to turn this back on, but <clears throat> maybe if I get involved in the next one. So, battery's gonna be charged. It's gonna be so much editing. This, this game is insane, bro! <laughs> it's on a one two five or a two two five. <laughs> I mean, I think none of us would be opposed to switching it to a five five ten. <clears throat> I don't think. Maybe. Oh, good luck, all in. I'm not in the hand. Oh my God. <laughs> Says he's got it. He can't call him, so he's got to bet it. There's still action to be had. Whatever. Hey, whatever's been called. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever has been called. Whatever has been called. Do we get a? <laughs> <laughs> no. Two twenty-five. Two forty. Oh boy. Two points. <laughs> There's so much in there. There's so much in there. Oh my goodness. All right, we're running it once. Somebody's got balls of steel here. Oh, we have a pair of nines. Pair, six to ten. <laughs> pair of nines. We have oh, aces. we have a pair of aces. We have eights Nine and eight. nines. Eights and nines. We have we have eights and nines, folks. Eights and nines for the for the main. There's yeah. When you start seeing this kind of action here, the game is going to come unglued. And so we ended up changing this game to a five five ten, and that's going to be on next episode. And you're going to see just craziness happen in huge. It's going to be a side, but. So eights and nines just won this. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe. Hopefully I'll see you guys next time where we're playing 5510 at the Hollywood, which is right after this hand. Play smart and run like a guy.